Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 110, we're going to take another look at base and why it's so important. And we're going to use some visual and auditory cues. But before I forget, the la our largest sale of the year starts today. In fact, the orders have been coming in all night, all day. <laughs> um, first it started in Europe, which of course is ahead of me. And we're going to have a lot of fun filling orders. We've got a lot of great tubes for customers. And if you want a discount code, just watch until the end and I'll give you a code for the Black Friday sale. And caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Well, yesterday, while Charles was busy pulling parts for the GU50 monoblocks that were getting ready for the test builders, I was playing, well, working, well, it felt more like play <laughs> for a while now, I felt like my custom open baffle speakers could use some help in the bass department. So I did my research and found an affordable pair of 14 inch paper coned high efficiency woofers that I thought would be a good match for my OBs. And yesterday I got to do the installation. Well, I had to do, modify the base uh, cabinets, but it took about mm, almost the full day, but I had the whole thing running by a late supper. And wow, what a difference filling in the lower end made for the musical presentation. Charles probably can describe the changes better than I can. Okay, well, I mean, I came in this morning and he was all excited for me to listen to them. So we sat down and we listened to some of our favorite test tracks. And wow, what a difference in the bass. But something changed that I wasn't expecting, and that was the sound stage. It sounded uh, more accurate, more full, and uh, we were talking about it, and we think that it's probably because we were getting more musical cues in the low frequencies that were being better reproduced. That's right. I mean, when you, when you think think about it, if you're watching uh, a live group, let's say Led Zeppelin in the '70s, and you've got you've got some video, watch John Paul Jones on bass, one of the greatest rock bassists of all times look over at um, John Bonham on drums. They're not looking over at each other because uh, they've each got pretty faces. They're looking over at each other because they're trying to follow the cues of the beat. So especially when the tempo is going to change, they'll glance over at each other because they want to make sure that when they change, that they're both on time, on the beat. And they've got the luxury of both hearing the beat and seeing it actually being played. At home, we've only got our ears to give us the cues that tell us what's going on. And of course, the foundation of all music is the bass track that's underlying the music. And that, I think that's a huge part as to why we found the sound stage, the stereo separation and sound stage, um, really they changed i mean they improved a lot but they they it, they, they changed it, it changed for the better in just about every way um uh it just sounded clearer and more precise and at the same time just filled in and really lovely well i think that was a worthwhile project now i thought what would be really fun is to um is to actually visually see on uh, our scope what a bass sine wave looks like and you can watch the woofer moving and you can actually hear it. Now we've thrown some grains of salt into the middle so you can actually physically see the vibrations. Now this is a very small woofer so it really is only going to be able to get down to maybe 30 or 40 hertz. Mm -hmm. Now the setup is we're, we're going to have a um, we're going to have a, a pure signal fed in by our signal generator We've got the Yuri monoblock amplifying. It's under. It's way underneath here, under this mess. I couldn't get everything on screen. Of course, we've got the woofer connected up. The scope is connected up to the speaker jacks to the output. Okay, Charles. Well, 
why don't you fire up the signal generator. Okay, so here we go at 10 hertz. Okay, now the scope can't count 10 hertz, but let's go up to 20. We should be able to see okay, it. Okay, there is 20. There we go. Now look at how long and low 20 hertz is. Now, what in the world is 20 hertz? Well, it's, it's 20 cycles per second. So that's a full wave 20 times a second. And that would be coming off of the speaker. It could be in the airwaves. But let's look at what it actually is on the scope. So let's go to our, our zero point here. So that's your, that's, hang on, let me freeze the screen for you. So that's our negative portion of the cycle. That's half the wave, right? The negative half. And then we have to, the positive half of the wave comes all the way up to here. So that is the full cycle. That's 360 degrees. Okay, let's get it running. And at 20 hertz, there's 20 of those every second. Right. Okay, bring it up to 30, Charles. Okay, here's 30. Okay. And let's shut up for a second and see if everybody can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it over the background noise. I can certainly... I can certainly feel it. Okay, notice how the waves, of course, have a higher frequency, right? And they physically have a higher frequency on the screen. That's They're getting closer and closer together. Okay, 40. 40. Ah, okay. Now things are starting to rock and roll. And, whoa, that's gone. And you probably can hear that now. Okay, 50. 60. Okay, and to anybody with headphones, be careful as we go higher here. It's going to get a bit louder. 70. Notice how tight we're getting. 80. Now we're getting near the top of the of the bass portion of the musical spectrum. 90. And 100. Okay, bring it back down step by step quicker so that they can see it. So, just to recap, somewhere around 40 hertz we can start to hear. Below 40 hertz, 30, 20, a good system will be able to do 20 to 40 hertz. Most of that is going to be um, uh, vibration. You're going to physically feel that in your body. From 40 hertz to about 100 hertz, that's the audible range of the bass. And it's where most of the bass is recorded. But as I previously mentioned, there's important stuff that's down at the very bottom end that's important to reproduce as well. Well, I hope that helped everybody understand a little bit more about how bass sounds, what it looks like, and maybe someday we'll pick up at 100 hertz and start talking about the mid-band, mid-range. Okay, well, what's been going on over at Melatone Kits, Charles? Well, as Dad mentioned earlier, we were, or I was busy, he was busy playing around. Uh, <laughs> I, hey, I thought it was working. <laughs> I was picking parts yesterday for the, uh, for the test builder kits for the GU50 monoblock. So we're busy getting those ready, and we're hopefully going to have an update for you soon on when they're going to be ready to ship out. But it, we're getting closer day by day. Yeah, we're going to deal with the, with the first days of the sale, which are always extremely busy. And then we'll get an email out to the test builders because, um, well, what came in? Well, parts. Lots of parts. In fact, some key parts. Hang on, let me grab some parts for you. Hundreds and hundreds of parts have been piling in. This is a very simple IEC inlet. I think I've got one in the bin beside me. Hang on. Let me go grab it. There we go. And this is about as simple as you can get. There's a built, right up here, there's a built-in fuse. That's the primary fuse. That's your IEC inlet. So that's where you would plug the cord into the back of the amplifier. And of course, this is where you wire your internal connections up. And... 
These are great. They're solid. They work well. They're not expensive and they allow a detachable power cord. So with a built-in fuse, what more could you ask for? And what we've been really waiting for, uh, which we've back ordered is the power transformers. Let me grab a box. And try not to hurt yourself while lifting it. <laughs> well, it's not that heavy. Oh, uh, they're pretty chunky. They're pretty chunky. I think I have to back out a little bit here. I'm not going to unbox them. The reason why is Hammond boxes up these transformers beautifully with these foam packs. So I think what they do is they put a, a an expanding foam pack in, they put a transformer in, and then one on top, and then they pull the rip cords. Uh, because these things fit snugly. Once you unbox the transformer, it's not easy, it's not easy getting it right back uh, where it belongs. Anyways, the beauty of Hammond transformers, besides the high quality, is that they have a complete universal line. And uh, we always buy universal transformers. And the reason for that is because they can handle any voltage anywhere in the world. So if your household mains are 110 to 120 something, uh, they got you covered. And if your if your mains are 220 to 240 and in between, we got you covered. So uh, they cost a bit more, but I think the investment's worthwhile. It means that everybody has a chance to build these great sounding kits. Okay, well, it was a short video, but we actually have to get back to filling orders. We've just, we're not overwhelmed yet, but <laughs> But there's more coming in by the minute. <laughs> yeah, I think we're getting close. So, but we're going to ship day by day. At the moment, we're 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 we're, we're not too far behind at the moment. Um, but eventually, I think we might get overwhelmed. But anyways, uh, we'll try and keep up. So here's here's um, the Black Friday code. It's Black Friday 15. The sale runs from today all the way through to Sunday, November the 27th. And you, you can use this on the entire store for 15% off with the exception of the kid amps and the gift certificates. Oh, and the gift certificates. Yeah. Stay safe, everyone. Have fun. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>